You switch on the light as soon as you enter a room. You never even stop to think about counting how long it takes for the bulb to light up. You couldn't. It's as if it's instant. Well, technically you could if you were fast enough. Good luck clicking that stopwatch in time when you're measuring over 670 million miles per hour. That's 180,000 miles per second. Almost the distance from the Earth to the Moon in the snap of a finger. Ah! Oops, wrong sound effect. Can you give me a finger snap? Yeah, that's it. In the snap of a finger. And the Moon's further away than you probably think. If all the planets in the entire solar system were lined up in one epic conga line, uh, 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 they'd fit between the Earth and its satellite. And that's including poor outcasted Pluto. Okay, light is fast. Moving on. It's a beautiful sunny day, perfect for a jog. And like any other day you go for a run, you stop and think, hey, I wonder what the speed of sound is, don't you? Well, definitely not nearly as fast as light. Need proof? Check for yourself next time it storms in your area. You'll see lightning flash before hearing the crack of thunder. The light from that bolt rushed to you, zoomed into your eyeballs, and up into your brain for you to understand, oh, lightning. All the while, the sound wave from the thunder is still on its merry way to your ear. It'll get there, just give it time. By the way, thunder isn't the sound of storm clouds crashing together. It comes from that very same lightning bolt. It races toward the ground and rips a path through the air as it does. The air politely moves aside to make way for the lightning, and in the instant the lightning's gone, boom! The air comes back together and makes the sound we call thunder. Oh, and here's a fun fact. Sound travels faster underwater than in the air. A little over four times faster, to be exact. So if you were to go for a swim with your friend and shout something bizarre underwater, they'd hear it a bit sooner than if you did the same thing outside of the pool. Uh Uh-oh, everybody else heard it too. (laughs) Oops. Sound also travels over longer distances underwater. It's why humpback whale calls can be heard for thousands and thousands of miles. But in a controlled environment where the air is dry and we have a constant temperature of 68 degrees Fahrenheit, the speed of sound is about 760 miles per hour. Now, that's a more realistic number, one that people can even reach. The famous Bell X-1 aircraft was the first to break the sound barrier on October 14, 1947. Test pilot Chuck Yeager was in the cockpit of the rocket plane. Imagine hearing that sonic boom for the first time ever in history. Bravo, Captain! Humans can race with sound, but light is a whole different challenge. For one, measuring it in the first place is no easy task. The official speed of light has changed several times throughout history, even going back to the 1600s. After centuries of debate and experiments with different results, the scientific community finally settled the matter in 1983. Uh, maybe. To measure the speed of anything, you'll need to know two things the distance between point A and B, and the time it takes for an object to travel between those points. With distance divided by time, you'll have yourself the speed of light. But with every experiment done to measure light speed, there's always been an extra cog in the wheel that everyone overlooked, or rather brushed aside. When doing an experiment using light beams and mirrors, we've always included the light beam's trip from A to B and back to A. With equal speed and equal distance, we have ourselves a controlled experiment and conclude an official speed number for the books. Case closed! Let's celebrate! (laughs) Not so fast. A certain someone in 1905 had something to say about this. And that someone put a theory out there that light can travel different speeds going forward and back. Still can't wrap your head around it? Well, let's take this example. You had a long day. You pulled an all-nighter at work and can't wait to sink into your comfy warm bed. You get on a bus and head home. The night's clear and there's zero traffic on the road. Before the wheels on the bus can even go round and round, you immediately conk out in the back seat. But right before that, you check the clock and saw it's exactly 10 p.m. (laughs) What? After a big bump on the road jolts you awake, you become aware of your surroundings. But you suddenly find yourself in the exact same spot as the moment before you fell asleep. That was a quick nap. But then you look at your watch and it's now 11 p.m. You fell asleep in the bus and missed your stop. You'll have to repeat the exact same route all over again. Bummer. 
What can you determine from this? Since the whole ordeal took you an hour, you can assume it took exactly 30 minutes from the bus stop to reach your house and another half hour from your house back to the bus stop. Sounds logical, right? In our physical bodies, such a conclusion makes perfect sense. But it was Albert Einstein who challenged this idea. With his reasoning, the trip could have taken 59 minutes to get home instead of 30 and one minute back to the bus stop. Or even vice versa. Since you were fast asleep, there's no way you can know. And this idea is what's keeping scientists and physicists up all night throughout the decades. When you get into light speed in space, then the mind-blowing stuff starts happening. It takes approximately 8 minutes for light to reach Earth from the sun. So light is super slow in space? Eh, not really. Now we're talking unimaginable distances. It takes 8 minutes for our sun's light to travel over 90 million miles to our planet. <laughs> That's something to think about when going to the beach. The sunlight that made your tan lines traveled so far across our solar system to reach your skin. Ah, how thoughtful. And you can get sunburnt even on a cloudy day. That's how powerful our star is. Now, imagine yourself living on Pluto. I know, I know, its planet membership got revoked in 06. But hey, call me old school. Our former furthest planet from the sun is so far away, it takes five and a half hours for sunlight to get there. No wonder it's always cold. The first planet in line is Mercury. The sun's rays reach it in a mere three minutes. Hey, that's probably enough time to listen to your favorite song. Mm. By the time the song ends, you, or the Mercurian version of you, will be basking in the sun's glory. It'll be impossible to listen to that track in space since sound can't even travel out there. You know, no one can hear you scream. <coughs> Oops, there she is again. Music is just vibrating air, and without any air in space, sound can't travel. That explains why it's so eerily quiet out there. <coughs> okay, can somebody take the scream girl down the hall? And while we're up in space, let's pay our neighbor a little friendly visit. Alpha Centauri is the closest star system to our own. And what fun, the trip is just 4 light years away. Uh, that's 25 trillion miles and 137,000 years on the road. And yeah, don't forget to pack a big lunch. To put all that in perspective, it would take around 5,000 generations in a super shuttle traveling through empty vast space to complete the journey. And we won't be able to come close to the star. Oh, and that's just one way. Okay, I think I'd rather come back to Earth now. Whew, that's better. Now, the longing question. How can we measure the speed of light without that little dilemma about the return trip? Oh, I got it. Why don't we just measure the speed with a super high-tech camera and map it out frame by frame until we're able to write down its speed? Well, nothing's as easy as it seems in the world of physics. Because when filming the light through a lens, we're not seeing the light itself, but rather a reflection of it. We just circled back to square one. Okay, scratch that plan. Then how can we prove light is going the same speed to its destination as its reflection is back to point A? Does the one-way speed have a defined value that's not a constant? Well, this is the ultimate question among scientists, and so far, there's just no way of truly measuring it. Unlike the speed of sound, which is more conceivable, the speed of light might just be light years ahead of us. Yes, just more fun light facts brought to you by The Bright Side. See the tie-in? Okay, never mind.